Hello, uh, my name is Sylvie Quetzi, and I will be talking about understanding the grand landscape in 2025, which is where we are. We all know that things have changed. We all know that things have changed um, quite a bit, particularly in this year. There has the grand uh, process is quite different from what we're used to. So let's get into it. So my, in my presentation, I'll be talking about the application process from finish to start. I'll be talking about the different types of funders and funding opportunities out there. I won't be talking about all of them, but uh, some of them. I'll talk about the grant review uh, criteria, and we'll also talk a little bit about some trends and some tips. So why do we do this anyway? Why bother? We are researchers, and as researchers, we need to do research. And what do we need to do research? We need finances, financial resources. That's what we need. And in order to acquire financial resources, many of, many of us have to apply for competitive grants. So what is the actual purpose of a grant proposal? A grant proposal's function is to persuade, persuade the reviewers that your research idea is worth funding. It can be worth funding because of its conceptual innovation, because of the methodology methodological rigor that you are actually using to get to your research questions or to answer your research questions and um, and your grant can also be worth funding by how rich and substantive the content is altogether all these three ideas and many other uh, uh, aspects to your grant will make your grant proposal worth funding so your role as a researcher is to actually persuade and convince the reviewers that you deserve the funding that they are out to give. Now, here's one tip. A successful proposal is written with the eye to the um, perspective, perspective of the reviewer. So the reviewer, you have to put yourself in the reviewer's shoes. If you were the reviewer, what type of information do you want to see in the grant that you are reviewing? So as you're writing, just remember that. So what's the actual point um, of a grant proposal? The grant proposal convinces an agency, this is a funding agency, of the importance of your project idea and your ability to carry it out. So it's not only how scientific, um, the idea is or the technical aspect of it and how much you master the technical aspect of it. But are you as a researcher or your research team actually able to carry out this um, research project from beginning to end? The grant proposal gives the funding um, agency a reason to trust you as the researcher with highly coveted resources, especially for us African resource uh, researchers, there is not as much in terms of funding. I mean, the sheer um, amount of money that is available to us is quite little. And there's so many of us that, com that compete for the same funding. Now, when you are competing, you want to win. Of course, you want to win. So the onus is, is, is on you, the researcher, to give the funding agency, to give the reviewer a reason to trust you with this funding that is so difficult to come by. So here's a scheme of a typical process of writing the proposal. And I will go, I'll go through this um, somewhat um, step by step. Um, <clears throat> so you see the, the, the activities on top, which are yellow, and then the activities on the bottom, which are blue. The ones on top is the ones that you actually would go through in terms of gathering the information, developing the concept. Um, writing the proposal, submitting the proposal. So once you submit the proposal, things can go two ways. Either you are awarded, which is what we're talking about, and you're not. if you're not awarded. I just want to spend just a 
minute or a few seconds talking about when you're not awarded. If you you write a proposal, you submit it, and you don't receive the funding, remember that not all is lost. Keep your proposal. I actually have a bank of proposals that I can always go back to if there's a new um, request for proposal that is similar. So remember that just because you're not awarded funds, that doesn't mean that all is lost. Um, here's a tip. Please start early. Um, keep an eye out for proposals. I do not commit to writing proposals in less than two weeks. And two weeks is actually too short. I actually give myself about three months, but we'll go through that. Um, so begin early. Begin thinking about the topic well in advance. So what do you actually need? At the beginning, once you see a call for proposal, a request for proposal out there, start thinking about gathering the information. How will you gather the information? Start, start thinking about your concept, um, reviewing the literature, see what is out there. Start thinking about the program, the actual funding agency. What is their mission? And does their mission align with your proposed idea? Um, start early thinking about expenses because this is information that is quite difficult. If you have a finance department that has experience with budgeting, um, grant proposal, that is wonderful. If you don't have experience with that in your team, you have to go get the experience because this is not an easy, an easy part. So next, you you start developing your, con your, your concept. You have to think about your main research um, aims, your main researchable questions, and be very sure that this is the direction that you want to that you want to go into. Remember that you're being judged, you're being evaluated. So once you actually finish with the groundwork and you actually start writing, um, the first thing I do is write an outline. I, I don't just go straight into, for example, writing the background, writing the rationale, writing the, the introduction. I first start with bullet points, bullet points and writing an outline. And then with my team, we review the outline. Remember that when you're writing, of course, we are, we, are, we are scientists, you know, we are doctor so-and-so, PhD this, MD that, professor this, professor emeritus that, yes. We are smart. We would not be where we are today if we're not smart. But when you write in the proposal, you want to be clear. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how complex you want to present your idea. If you're not clear, nobody will understand your your proposal what i actually do um in terms of formatting i hire and i usually pay maybe sometimes i pay two hundred dollars four hundred dollars i pay for a professional editor to go through my proposal after i'm finished with it because a professional editor would actually take the time and they have the skills to to edit and go through the formatting formatting is so important remember that you have to follow the guidelines of the funding agency so these days um most funding agencies use a platform where you submit a proposal and the platforms will have the exact format that they want. So for example, if they say that they want, let's say 800 words for the introduction, you cannot go past 800 words. You have to be very careful because many, and this has happened to me particularly, this has happened to me, many grant proposals get disqualified just on the administrative aspect of things because it didn't respect um, some the guidelines, for example, if they say that, and this has happened to me where I didn't read the instructions correctly, I needed a European partner in my team, and then I put together a team, did not have the European partner, automatically disqualified. So remember that it is extremely important to follow the guideline and always aim for clarity. Avoid the jargon. Just avoid it. You want to be clear. A lay person should be able to read your proposal and be able to understand it. 
So you have written your proposal, it's nice, it's been reviewed, it's time to submit. Remember, if you have the funding agency requires um, a cover letter, go ahead and give them a cover letter, just one page. Remember to respect the submission date. Me, when I'm in Africa, with the internet connection being unsteady, I don't submit the day of. I would actually submit either a day or two before because I don't want any problems uh, when I'm submitting. So here's a typical process um, for a grant proposal review. This is from the time you actually submitted. The funding agencies typically, you know, this differs from agency to agency, but typically they could take about three to five months just to review your proposal. And sometimes they will send you back comments. They will send you back comments. Um, when they do send you back comments, they're expecting you to answer the, their comments. Sometimes they can be a little better back and forth. Now, not all of them will send you back comments. Sometimes they would just like reject it um, right out. But from the time you write and from the time they send you comments, the back and forth of the comments, you could be up to five, six, seven months. And then a decision is made on whether or not you are awarded the funding. Now, remember, even once you receive that email, we are pleased to inform you that. Don't we all love that? We love that. Once you receive that email, it's great news, but there can still be a little bit of back and forth. Sometimes a month, two, three months uh, of back and forth, and the back and forth after the grant has been awarded usually also involves um, negotiating contracts because there are contract terms once the um, your grant proposal has been awarded. So let's talk about different funding agencies. There are so many different types of funding agencies out there. Um, the key to developing a sustainable research program is to really understand all those different um, funding agencies. Remember, um, they are the ones who are sending out requests for proposals. So they really want to give you the money. They want your grant to be funded. They want to give you the money. That's their main objective is to give a researcher or uh, many researchers the funding. So remember, they want to fund the grant. Now that they want to fund your grant, that is in your hands. So there's different... Um, funding agency, the first group that I will talk about is the multilateral and international agencies. Now, these are the ones that are for global health, um, like WHO, the World Bank, and those type of um, organizations. And then you have your bilateral donors. These are usually the government aid um, organizations, such as in the US, you have the USAID, Let's not get into how complicated USAID got this year, but um, they still do fund and I'm expecting that things will likely change um, in the future. And then you have other governments, like in the UK, you have um, the UK government, you have the European Union itself that also funds. You have, you know, you have um, 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 GIZ um, from Germany. Um, there's, so there's different of these bilateral um, donors. And then you have the philanthropic um, foundations. To tell you the truth, this, these are my preference because they're usually not as strict as the government institu the institutions. The philanthropic um, foundations, um, are, for example, the Gates Foundation, Welcome Trust, Chai, um, the Master MasterCard Foundations, and they are actually quite different. And like I mentioned before, they're a little bit more relaxed um, in terms of administering their funds funding than the di different um, government organizations. And then so you have these regional and pan-African initiatives like um, the African Academy of Science, EDCTP. Um, EDCTP is actually European and developing countries clinical trial partnerships. So you have the uh, African um, institution merging with European institutions. Uh, you have the African Union, the African CTC, um, the WHO TDR um, have benefited also from grants from them. 
and then you have this academic and research uh, partnerships. Now, these are universities and research institutions that collaborate ac across continents. And the, typically, they get funded um, as a consortium of university, and then they provide that funding to PhDs, the clinical research uh, networks. And, you know, some of them are like the Fogarty programs, the um, uh, this different uh, partnership for clinical research where different universities get, get together and actually have funding to dispense for research. Okay, so let's talk about grant review criteria. There's six of them and I'm going to go through one by one. The first one that the reviewer will look at is impact. What is the actually impact? What is the bank that you are expecting? to produce with your research idea? What difference will it make? Will your research idea be likely to exert a sustained and powerful influence on, on your research field? The next one is significance. That's the question that reviewers would usually say, so what? So you have this research idea, so what? Why is it important? Why does it matter? What is it significant? Are you talking about addressing an important problem or a critical barrier that is needed to progress in your particular field? So that's what we mean by significance. Then you have the investigators. They're actually research team. Does the research team have the experience, the breadth, and the depth of experience necessary to carry out the research idea that is being proposed. This is very important to grant um, funding agencies. Also, they look at your approach. Now, this is the technical aspect. Um, this is actually where they will actually look at your technical mastery of your craft. Do you technically know what you're doing? Are you using the quiet equipment? Are you using um, the correct methods in order to answer the research questions that you approach. Uh, and then they look at your environment. So we know we work within African institutions. Um, what the grant agency wants to know is, does your institution actually allow for this type of research to get done? Do they actually contribute the um, scientific environment that you work in? Does it actually contribute to the probability of success? Do you have the support that is necessary? Does your, is, does your institution have a history in terms of managing the types of grant that you are requesting? So these are the review criteria that the, the, uh, the reviewers um, look at. Also, they look at the budget. Now, if your budget is not adequate, that tells the reviewer that you don't know what you're doing. Meaning that if your budget is too small or too large, that tells the reviewer that you don't know what you're doing. Same for timeline. If the timeline is too small or the timeline is too large, that tells the reviewer that you don't know what you're doing. So don't sleep on budget and timelines. Even though this is not the, as the technical aspect of things, it's a very, very critical review criteria that will determine whether or not you get um, funded. Oh, wow. I'm actually a little bit ahead of time. Um, so in just remember that in the end, when you're writing a grant proposal, write it with the perspective of the reviewer. Write it with the perspective of the reviewer. Uh, what does the rev if you were the reviewer, what would you want to see? And um, they want to fund the research. So you just have to make sure that your particular grant proposal is competitive enough. And I know it's difficult, but remember, even if your grant proposal is not funded, keep it. Have it enter into your proposal bank, and then who knows? You you might just be able to, uh, to answer it, I mean, to use it at a later time. Thank you so much. I appreciate your, your time.